All right, uh, hello internet. I am Eichenbahn of Lux and Hemlock, and this is another uh, gameplay video for the Cosmic Wheel Sisterhood. Uh, I've really enjoyed it so far. It's been very atmospheric. Uh, the story's been very interesting. Uh, making the cards has been super fun, um, and the story's starting to pick up a little bit. Uh, quick recap of what happened last time. We had just finished. Uh, making our pact with uh, the the cosmic beam, the behemoth that we had summoned. Uh, we made our first four cards, and then we were visited by an arbiter of a of, of a witch order um, who helped us helped get visitation rights so that uh, other witches could come and see us here on our asteroid. Um, and then we we met our friends. We met our friends uh, Dahlia and Jasmine, and we were asked by Dal Dahlia to uh, to help one of her friends who has also summoned a behemoth. So I think that's probably what we can look forward to in this episode. Um, we made a few more cards. I'll show you the deck that we have so far. I think it's pretty cool. Also, I found out a little bit too late at the very end there that I, I actually did figure out how to manipulate the cards a little bit more, how to change what they look like. I still haven't figured out if there's a way to kind of zoom in and out on the background. I'm sure there is. Um, so hopefully the next couple cards we make we can be a little bit more in we can get a little bit more interesting with how we make them. Um, that's definitely been one of the highlights of the game so far. Just making the cards feels really fun and I'm very curious. I, I'm really curious how the actual system for the cards work and whether or not like the card that we make it will help us with points later on. We'll see. I'm still trying to figure all that out. We'll also see how the consequences of some of our actions uh, and our choices so far in the game are going to start affecting it. But yeah, so we're gonna we're gonna jump back in right where we left off. I'm gonna um, I'm gonna show off the cards that we have so far. So this is the last card we made, which is the Charred Dragon. I I thought this one came out pretty cool. Uh, I, there's certain parts of the card that you can't take off, so I had to like include this weird mace in it. Um, but yeah, that was that was pretty neat. We made the red secret, and this isn't my favorite art that we have on any of the cards, but it is one of my favorite meanings, like communication, peace, judgment, test, yearning, passion, rejection, and bad omens. So that's a that'll be an interesting one to draw if it ever comes up. Uh, we have the Drowned Ardor. Uh, I thought this one was very pretty. I liked that one. Um, the Didgeridoo. Uh, I feel like the name on this card doesn't <laughs> doesn't really match the imagery personally, but I do like the meanings on it, and I like the art on it. I just don't think the name of the card actually uh, is feels intuitive for what we got with it. Uh, the Golden Architect. I do really like this card, too. Um, High Alchemy. This is probably my favorite card so far. Uh, I I just like the way that this one turned out. I, I just like that one quite a bit. And then the Standing Ovation. This was our first card. And I like this one too. This one, this one is a pretty cool card. Uh, I would like to get more air elements. So if we get a chance, that would be great. But there's only so much control we have over it so we'll see how this all plays out for us as we continue the story but right now uh, we're gonna go read some books I think is where we left off oh actually this is the first time we've seen our main character like a, a close-up all right so what to do we could study we could read interactive fiction we could sleep or go back. Um, I think that Fortuna needs. I'm gonna have her read some interactive fiction. Let's go with that. I'll pick an interactive tale at random from my collection The Secret Cut by Jordi Di Paco. It's always been a legend among butchers on the island of Terra Nova about a secret cut hidden inside cows with crimson fur. 
Cows with crimson fur are already a rarity, but finding this piece of meat is even rarer and requires a high level of skill to extract it undamaged. As the myth goes, whoever eats this del delicacy will be blessed with unwavering health and good fortune. Not once in your 70 years as a butcher have you ever come across a crimson cow until today. A farmer friend of yours brought it before dawn, a very young calf, just a few weeks old. He doesn't want to have anything to do with crimson cows since he believes they bring bad fortune. You're not sure if he's unaware of the legend or if he's really had bad experiences with them. In any case, there she is, her fur bright as bonfire even in the dim light of your workshop. She's too precious. Spare her life. Butcher the cow. <laughs> uh... She's too precious. Spare her life. I wouldn't want to kill a cow, even if it did have red fur. For the life of you, this animal is too unique to be turned into meat. You spare her life and adopt her as your life companion. You name her Rhapsody. She brings you health and happiness by means of company, not sustenance. She is gentle, loving, and patient. She listens to all your tales and reacts with a moo in just the right places. Four years go by. Rhapsody grows big and soft. You prepare a bucket of her favorite herbs to celebrate her fourth birthday. As you are singing happy birthday to her, an expensive black car drives slowly into your yard. The chauffeur gets out and opens the door to an old woman emblazoned with a fancy red coat. She joins the singing with a smile. Good day to you, dear butcher, she says upon finishing the song. Rhapsody dives into her birthday treat. I'm happy to find this fine specimen in good health. I'd like to purchase your cow. The chauffeur opens a briefcase in front of you. One million dollars if you get the secret cut out of her for me. No, this is her cow. We, it's, and it's her birthday. You refuse. Rhapsody is just too precious. The woman twists her nose. I'm willing to go up to five million dollars if you'll get the legendary meat from me, please. Refuse again. No. Rhapsody is not for sale. The woman senses your unbreakable determination and decides to give up. They pack up graciously and leave forever. You live until you are a hundred years old, not finding yourself bedridden a single time. You and Rhapsody die together peacefully, cuddling in her stable. You tell her goodbye, and she moves just at the right time. Oh, that actually gave us some stuff. What to do? Uh, I wonder if we can keep doing the interactive fiction. Let's do some study, though. All right. What do we have here? Excerpt on the four elements by which Euenia. So Euenia is actually our mentor. That was a character that was mentioned by Jasmine. Um, so this is a book that was given to us by our mentor, most likely. For the initiate, the fact that magic is reduced to four elements may strike them as an oversimplification. But the building blocks of our universe are simple. No matter what taxonomy you develop to understand reality, it always fits within the four elements. Even if you reject anything astral and focus on the material things, reality can be divided into four elements. Gas, liquid, solid, and energy. In a more philosophical sense, you can dissect anything by analyzing its where, the earth, when, the air, why, the water, and how, fire. You can even pick apart the most mundane things by these rules. For instance, a stone. Its air will reveal to you how it affects its environment, what the social preconceptions are about it, or how much time it has been standing there. Its water will allow you to access its potential to become poetry. The reason the stone and no other ended up in that particular place, or what its initial form was before erosion shaped it in that way. Its earth demonstrates what the stone is made of, how good it would be as part of a wall, or even what kinds of carvings you could work onto it. Its fire tells us its potential to cause harm, how easy it would be to break it apart, or how coveted the stone could be. As you see, the four elements open the gates of thoughts to infinite modes of analysis. Okay, so that didn't give us a whole lot. Uh, I just want to click on this again to see if we get a different book or if it's the same one. Yeah, so we got another one. Tickles by Emma Rios. Back and forth, this wooden husk, I take my naps and wandered adrift in an endless, merciless sea. Oh, that's interesting. We got an image. 
Swayed by fate, we both aspire to meet a destination, for that we survived storms, dodged leviathans, ignored decline, hunger, and thirst. Inspiration burnt our souls, making us survive by and for desire, but the infinite happiness of meeting a goal doesn't last long. Now, here I lay, longing for a reawakening. I think the messenger is back, but maybe it's just my mind playing tricks on me again. This little friend is a dissonant note in the everyday routine of doing nothing, barely feeling and being bored to death. Once it even tickled. In truth, it's been days since I could move my limbs, since I started feeling so exhausted. I can but lie under the sun and wait for a less blinding starry night, stirred by somehow noticing another living being close. The little bird lights me up inside. I gave this friend the title of Hopebringer, in anticipation of a well-earned rest shorewards on more quiet grounds. The wet valley tricked me into believing I'm a mariner, one that has seen better days. However, any recollection of my past keeps fading fast. I'm lucky I can still listen. The sea teaches you to let things flow. The tide goes up and down, but every drop has to go ashore at some point to kiss the dry land. My moat did it recently. So say the new whispers, the waves, and the storm, and the wood finally cracking and stumbling upon a sandbank. A kiss is a bit too passionate for my taste. I wonder if I have ever kissed someone. I like kissing gently. Haha, <laughs> look at all this drama. My old self still tries to spur these memories. I'm adrift, but happy to have missed the whole intensity of the wreckage. The numbness in my limbs keeps the pain at bay, but they can still tickle. Isn't touch nice, feeling another fellow, even scarcely, like those little claws gaze, grazing softly all over me? If only I could touch its feathers to return such a beautiful gift, if only a friend could still be within my grasp. Please tell me, little bird, should I endure or should I give up? I'm... Huh. Cursed or grace? Hmm. graced. There are so many things I still yearn for. To feel alive, I only need to let go of the tissues and tendons that bind me. Unstick myself from these bones. Look at me, little bird. I cheat the laws of gravity. Hush, hush, stupid, tiresome bird. Isn't there enough fish in the sea that you needn't eat from a corpse? Oh my god, that's a woman talking. Look at all this mess. She doesn't seem to notice me. Should I start a conversation? It would be very rude otherwise. Excuse me, miss. My voice crawls out of my throat, as broken as the rest of what's left of me. These deadened senses don't allow me to, pro to properly introduce myself, but why do I suddenly sound so eerie? Ah, a talking ghost. Oh no, I made this poor woman jump in fright. I, I'm sorry, I didn't mean... And to scare you, whoa, is she trying to hit me with her stick? Please put your cane away. Be careful of who you startled to death, Spooky. What a witch I am, since when can a simple shadow catch me off guard? Listen, ghost, I put a hex on my crone's heart. If it jumps out of this chest, our arteries will have your sobs strangled in eternal pain. She keeps waving that staff. She truly wants to kill me. Please stop. Don't hurt me. I beg you. We are trouble, you know, old hags. Why is this person threatening me? What did I do to her? I meant you no harm, I swear. Who's terrified now, ghost? Not this old crow. It's been a while since my last exorcism, but at least I haven't lost my touch. I was merciless when I was young, feared on both sides of existence. Not for power, not for greed, not by choice. The world and the underworld both hate magic. Nevertheless, I cared and committed to educate losers who wouldn't let me live my life on my own terms. Far and wide, ignorance makes one arrogant, daring, cruel, a goddamn cretin. I was enduring, then I became hell. What reason was there to let their bitter fear erase who I am? Call me a hoodlum. I made them all. Cursed. I'm so scared myself. Are you imp? Serves you right. Please, I need help. I don't know what's happening to me. Why do I speak this weirdly? 
Wait, don't tell me. You called me a ghost, am I truly? Shit. Oh gods, oh gods, indeed it looked away, too shaken for a creature from the afterlife. The poor fellow may have just died. It doesn't happen very often, but the phantom amnesia can turn the coldest assassin into a pure, gentle mind. Unaware of any harm they may have done, of any pain they may have suffered, of any mistake to feel remorse over, ghosts become too sensitive for this world. Hey, don't... Please don't cry. I was a bit of a bully. I got scared and I overreacted. You're so translucent I could barely see you. Not all of us are the considerate type. Old people don't give a shit. We forget to be nice. There's something more pathetic than a necromancer losing her shit. Ahem. A necromancer feeling embarrassed. For that I'm sorry. No, it's my fault. I can't see very well either. Everything feels so confusing. If I offended you, I apologize. Far be it from me to hurt anyone. A skiff with a rotting passenger that happens to be well-mannered and gentle. It's all cool, don't worry. Unbinding this poor soul is going to be more difficult than I thought. You're kind, my kind, she just said. See the world just like we see you, blurrily. That's why you get lost so often. I must be levitating over my corpse. Do I reek? I'm sure I do. I can't even smell the sea. This is so embarrassing. Is it normal for the departed to feel benumbed? Fate always takes its toll on our senses, little ghost. Look at me, one foot in the grave, and yet my brain furiously believes I'm still in my twenties. How can I compare myself? This poor soul is dead. Stinky, rotten, beyond repair. Trying to grasp a glimpse of existence for a reason to finish something, to claim our desire, perhaps to still be worthy of being loved. Actually, I can't remember how old I was when... Age is irrelevant, Spooky. There's only one way to die a peaceful death, and that is to choose it yourself. For the rest of us, there's always something. A dream, a promise, something to make amends for. Witches or ghosts, we are all... Grace. Whether it's for little pleasures or trials to overcome, the living and the dead treasure every second of consciousness. How could you not be a form of life? I'm but a fool, an old hag, trying to cheer up a specter by getting depressed herself. Would you mind if I smoke? Oh, and none at all. I couldn't help thinking about my body smelling. Ha <laughs> ha. Aren't you an anxious one? What a dumb thing to worry about. She's so kind. Pretty cool, too. Smoking fancily right beside me like the heroine of the story. I could blush. Tell me something about you, little ghost. Your voice comes along with a strange echo that tickles in my ears and reverberates a somewhat sweet melancholy. Feels akin to my own sadness. Wow, now I'm blushing. Oh, thanks. Wait. Why am I taking this as a compliment? I thought my voice sounded truly awkward. I think it's beautiful. Even if she's only trying to be kind, I feel so relieved. How long has it been since someone was nice to me? A sadness akin, a final memory to treasure. There's not so much I can tell. I've been conscious all this time, but also forgetful. I made it her thanks to a little friend, but now that I have acknowledged myself, I feel I have lost my bird forever. Damn, I am such a stupid woman. I sent your bird away because it was eating from you. I'm sorry. No problem. My flesh is not very healthy. Was that supposed to make me feel better, spooky? Can I ask you something? Sure, whatever you want. Are you here to vanish me? Oof, the first rule of this job was never sympathize with ghosts. Don't worry, I'm not in a position to rebel. I'm stranded in a dead sea in which it is impossible to sink, but is also terrifyingly to put a foot forward. Wasn't that poetic? I have a soft spot for artists. I'm a sea witch. It's my job to take care of the ones like you. I must pull out the ribs protecting your heart to make a broth in salt water. I must bless the branch of a willow to whack your boat with. I must bury you under the tree so its roots tie your spirit forever. I understand. I can only be a burden for those I would be sharing this fainting death with. No, send nothing, Spooky. I am discarded myself, forsaken by people I loved who willingly traded me for busy lives and for feeling invulnerable. I have at least five years left. I'm in a position to rebel. If I had breath, she'd have taken it away. I wish ghosts couldn't cry. It feels so embarrassing. Hey again, there's no need to be this dramatic. I didn't want to. I'm... I'm sorry, I don't want to be sad. She offers me her hand, but I'm still stuck in an abyss of blurry lines and fading spots. 
Your face is but a painful silhouette I wish I could recognize, and I can't stop trembling. Fair enough. I meant to be altruistic, but I was going I was doing it for myself, to ease my own compassion. Don't worry, dear. To live is to have a choice. I am dead. Can I truly choose to cease to exist? Their hand feels so warm. You are alive to me, and I can totally walk you peacefully to oblivion. What to do? That was really long. Um, that that went on a while. Um, I'd like to get more points, but I really don't want to run into another one of those. We'll try one more. The Hand of the World by Eva Sid. The girl was ambling along the path. Shrouded in the smoky haze of dawn, she was crying. The words of father still echoed in her head. The warmth of his last kiss still beat on her cheek. Since you were born, I knew there was something strange about you. It's time for you to join your kind. Without further ado, father left her in the thick of the night. The path was narrow and marked a trail that was easy to follow but hard to swallow, a slight furrow of land that led to a whole new life. After hours of walking, the girl stumbled upon the knocker of a trap door on the ground right where the path ended. It was a beautiful and antique-looking piece, a hand carved in bronze holding a sphere between its fingers, a globe. She pulled gently, and the hatch reacted to her touch by opening diligently. The globe was waiting for her. The girl entered the blackness beneath the floor, groping the height of the steps until she emerged into a dimly lit room. As her eyes became used to the gloom, she spotted the hunched silhouette of a woman at the back of a vaulted chamber. Welcome, my child. From now on, you will be the daughter of another flesh, the sister of another blood. Are you ready for the initiation rite? I have no choice. You carry within you the primordial force that secretly rules the world, but such power needs to be tamed. Power requires sacrifice, just as the world needs balance. The woman approached her. Her skin was wrinkled like the ridges of a freshly plowed field. The force rests in the space between pairs of opposites. We must relinquish one of our senses to focus that force. Sight and hearing govern the rationality of people. Smell and taste drive their emotions. The girl struggled to understand. What about touch? That is the only sense we cannot renounce. We are the hand that subtly rules the becoming. It is the tool for channeling our magic. The girl scrutinized the woman's face, wondering what her choice would have been and what kind of magic she would flaunt. She thought it would be easier to live without some senses than others. Surely there was a catch. Do not be afraid. Look inside yourself, and you'll know the right choice. Hmm. Which senses would you give up, Internet? I think... If I had to choose, I would definitely give up smell. <laughs> smell, the mighty wave that envelops the most profound desires with significance. Okay. Um, well, we got some points from that. I... I'm going to go to sleep now. You're digging your own grave when your shovel hits something hard. You unearth a bronze statue of yourself. The statue comes to life, and you agree to switch places. It buries you, and your bronze self keeps on living your life. That's interesting. Very interesting. All right, we have some new letters. Oh, look at these. Which Fortuna, my friend Jasmine is always talking about you, and she just told me you're allowed to receive visitors. Congratulations. Sorry for contacting you so abruptly, but I think your divination arts could help me regarding a thing with a personal project. Am I in a bit of a desperate situation? Coming from Louise. Hello, Fortuna. My name is Greth. I am a witch architect. I believe our common friend Dahlia told you about my situation. I need the maximum discretion regarding this matter, so I'd rather talk about this in person. Okay, so... 
So each one of these comes from our different friends. Hopefully. Yeah, okay. Power's flickering a little bit, so. I'm... Let's. Jasmine didn't mention this person, so let's invite them. Let me Luis. Oh, she's got like multiple arms. That's pretty cool. I like her. She's got a neat vibe. Ah, welcome. Welcome. Ah, uh, hi, what's your name? Fortuna. Your name is Fortuna. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> nice to meet you. Your name is Luis, right? No need to be so nervous. Any friend of Jasmine is welcome here. Ah, uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's just that I've heard so many things about you that now I feel like I'm meeting a celebrity or something. Oh yeah? What have you heard? Uh, all good things, don't worry. Mostly from Jasmine. She loves you and missed you so much, you know that? I missed her a lot too. Why don't you take a deep breath and tell me a bit about yourself? Ah, uh, okay, sorry. My name is Luis, and uh, I'm sorry, I'm drawing a blank. It's okay, how about I ask you some questions, would that be alright? Okay, that's good, thank you. Let's see. Let's ask her, how do you know Jasmine? Ah, uh, she hired me to weave a special net to gather dew from her greenhouse. It's one of the projects I'm most proud of. The dew filtered through this net makes an astounding base substance for all kinds of flower-based potions. Jasmine's brews became quite popular after my contribution. It's been centuries since I've had something from Jasmine. I can't wait to try this improved version. Together we also developed some magical tea bags that multiply the fragrance of dried mixtures. That is so cool! Now I see how you two became close. Both you and Jasmine are super crafty. It's going to be so much fun to find someone to share your passion with. It is indeed. I always have a great time with Jasmine. Nice. More questions? Let's see. What do you like to do in your spare time? Oh, hmm. I love reading, playing my multi-neck bass, and spying on mortals. Oh wow, that's weird. We reading? Uh, is it not hip to read anymore? Hip? <laughs> I was kidding, the odd part is spying on mortals. And I'm a bit curious about the multi-neck bass too, to be honest. Uh, <laughs> I play a custom bass guitar with three necks, since I have multiple arms and all that. But I don't play it in front of people. I only use it to meditate. It's really so soothing to weave several deep melodies together. I like the idea. I wish I could hear it someday. What about spying on mortals? I love making myself invisible and just watching them go about their lives, comparing lifestyles from many different cultures and planets. After many years of observation, I gain the ability to perceive their intellecty. Intelli- Intelliki? Huh. I've never seen that word. That's how I found my calling and developed my pith weaving. Pith weaving. Ah, sorry, that's my special ability. I can tell you more about it if you're interested. Whatever you want to ask is cool. Actually, relax. Let's see. What's your speciality? Alright. I'm a pith weaver. Oh, that sounds cool. What does it mean? I can harvest mortals intelliki. I, what does this word mean? Should I know what this word is? I'm, it's probably is a real word. It's a magic substance that defines one's behavior and desires. A single mortal barely produces enough thread, but if you find a community with a rich collective subconscious, you can weave whole clothes and capes. Wow, that's hard to picture, but it sounds fun. And these clothes you craft have magical properties, I imagine. That's right. It depends on the kind of community you pull the thread from. As a quick example, the yarn extracted from a band of artists could make a lovely scarf that stimulates the wearer's creativity. I love it already. I'll weave something sometime for you. What kind of intelligently would you fancy most? Okay, cool. So we'll get maybe a cool piece of clothing or something. Uh, 
I'm gonna say from astronauts. That would be pretty cool. I don't know what they'd make out of that, but that'd be neat. From astronauts. Wow, no one's ever asked me to harvest from them. Now I'm excited to see what comes of this. If I get the chance, I'll bring you a nice cloth as a thank you present for having me. Thank you so much. Do you want to know anything else? You make it sound like this is an interrogation. No, no, sorry, I'm having a good time. But it's easier for me if you ask me things. Oh, she's shy. Sure. Let's see. Why did you come to see me? Ah, yes. Better get to business. I'm here precisely because of my pith weavy weaver skills. As I explained, the intellect for mortals varies depending on the community they're in and the lives they lead. The universe provides enough different context to find whichever kind of energy fits your purposes. But of course, there is the shortcut of manipulating mortals to produce the substance you need. For example, you could add lust serum to the water supply of community to harvest massive amounts of sexual energy from their orgies. Quite an example. Ah, uh, no, not that I've tried that this more than more than once. <laughs> I usually prefer all natural chaos red intellecti. The thing is, Adana saw a lot of potential in one of my projects. It started back when Earthlings began their conquest of space. The colonies on Mars were proliferating at a supernatural speed. Conflict spread throughout every bordering nation on Earth and on any planet mankind set foot on. I felt an imperative need to witness that massive event. It all oozed in otherworldly energy. So I spent decades spinning thread from it. And as it happens, that substance can create an extremely effective weapon for capturing behemoths. Uh-oh. What? Really? How so? Earth's intellect was highly contaminated. It was as if the whole planet's fate had somehow been sealed, and Bahamas happened to be extremely susceptible to reality-altering arts. I used that substance to weave gladiator-like webs that can suck and entangle Bahamas dry of their magic. What? You can also craft decent pieces of armor against Bahamas spells. Uh -huh. And why is Adina so interested in developing such armaments? The cosmic echoes warned her that Bahamas will threaten the coven, so she wants to prepare accordingly. The problem is that even with such a tremendous phenomenon, I only managed to pull enough thread to craft one set of web and armor, and Adana is set on developing a massive weapon to erase Bahamas from this plane of existence entirely. I don't believe I have what it takes to see this through. What do you need to make this happen exactly? Adana discovered that if you promote war and stir conflict in this new society, the reality-altering arts that engulf the planets try to fight back, as if everyone was programmed to preserve the status quo. In this process, humanity's intellect once again shows the characteristics it had when the massive change happened, and I can harvest it. So what are you... Adana tasked me with provoking World War III. I mean, if... If we're talking about like an intergalactic society, is it really World War Three? It's more like Space War One, right? Do you want me to help you cause it? That's terrible. We can't allow that. Exactly. But I don't want to anger Adana. There's already been talk of expelling me from the coven should I fail to deliver. Isn't there a way out of this? This is totally unfair. Adana is pushing it too far. Take a look at what the cards have to say. I need you to tell me exactly what you want to ask the deck. First, the most important thing, what should I do with Earth? That's if I should do anything at, at all with it. Then, this is a bit embarrassing, but I happen to be in love with a mortal. That's totally cool. The thing is, he doesn't know I'm a witch. I present myself to him in a form of a regular woman. He's a smuggler in one of Earth's remaining colonies. He doesn't have an easy life. It breaks my heart, and I wish I could save him. I'm afraid to show him my true nature. I'm sure he's noticed there's something special about me, but still. So that's another question. What should I do about my mortal lover? My advice is not to get attached to mortals. They wither too fast. But sure, let's check what the cards have to say about him. I'd also like to know how to handle Adana. Oh, so we get three cards. We haven't got this before. Handle her? I'm sure she's going to be really upset when she finds out I want to quit. 
I don't want to be expelled or exiled. Is there any way to escape her wrath? I wish I knew. It's going to be a hard one, but this is a new deck. Maybe it will find a solution. I'm shuffling the cards now. Keep your questions and your in your thoughts. Oh, wow. There's, these are big questions. This, there's a lot writing on this. All right. The Golden Architect. All right. So... Happiness, support, success, indifference, and stagnation. So, I want to give the Golden Architect to Adana. Oh man, but this, this could be good for any of them. This is a good card. Um... I'm going to put the Golden Architect with Adana. No, I don't know. Uh, Planet Earth. You need to find other ways to disrupt reality. War isn't the only way to mess with the established order. Earth won't give you what you need, no matter what you do. I'm going to go with this one. You need to find other ways to disrupt reality. War isn't the only way to mess with the established order. Oh, I've never looked at it that way. But, that's easier said than done. Do you want me to draw an extra card to look for ideas? Wow, can your deck do that? Of course, we could explore any concept we want. Ooh... Card reading isn't just for divination. In fact, I feel the cards work at their best when you use them for reflection. How cool. Okay, so Red Secret. Oh, the bartender can channel hidden feelings. Crossing past the haunted soul can beget calamity. The saber channels wrath. Oh. Okay, so the red secret, I think, fits best with the lover, but it could be a Dana. I'm going to put it for a Dana. Open up to a Dana. She'll be surprisingly understanding and work with you to find the middle ground. If you don't show even... A a bit of progress, she will punish you. Do what you can, no matter how long it takes. Open up to Adana. She will be surprisingly understanding and work with you to find the middle ground. Standing, work with you to find the middle ground. You think so? I'm as surprised as you, knowing Adana's character. But the deck is certain of it, and I've never seen it fail. Wow, it's definitely surprising, but it's good news. I should have put more trust in our leader's judgment. I'll speak with her, and I'll let you know how it goes. I wish you the best. Okay, okay. High Alchemy. This is a great card. Uh, introspection, yearning, passion, and power. I think this could go for either one of them, but for disruptive ideas, I think High Alchemy is perfect. Grant special magical abilities to some mortals and turn them into saints, able to cast miracles on their people. Form a pact with benign deities. They move to Earth and bless mortal lives. Yeah, I like that one. Uh, I'd like to get some more air, though. Yeah, yeah, that's good. I want to get some more air. Grant special magical abilities to some mortals and turn them into saints, able to cast miracles on their people. Whoa, that is wild. Earth's fate is going to have a hard time trying to fix that. The reality-altering intellect is going to overflow from the planet. I love it. If you're going to solve things to which, you should own it, Luis. This universe is big, but thought can be even bigger. My mentor always said that there are endless solutions to a problem. 
and it does witches more than anyone who should entertain as many as possible. That is a valuable lesson indeed. I'll treasure it. Thank you. Thank your mentor for me. And thank you for your wonderful deck for the solution. Our pleasure. Okay. Oh, this is like the perfect card. We got the perfect card for the last one. Drowned Ardor. Review your true nature to him. He will understand and love you even more. Move to Earth, set up your home there, and invite the mortal to live with you, then slowly open up to him. Oh, I love that. Yeah. So that gives him time to kind of learn more about her, and they get to be together. So that's wonderful. That sounds like a nice way to, in to reduce the shock. And the idea of the two of us living together sounds quite nice, to be honest. This is a beautiful solution. Thank you so much, Fortuna. Don't take too much time, though. Mortals are not eternal. Okay, okay. I'll make it quick. Two years max. Sounds like a plan. Can't wait to set up shop on Earth. Nice. Phew, that was an intense session. I've had my fortune read before, but it's never felt like this. You sure are something else, Fortuna. I'm just happy to help. I'll let you know how everything plays out. That's if you're okay with me visiting again, of course. You're always welcome in my house, Louise. Any friend of Jasmine's is a friend of mine. Likewise. Well, I'm a bit drained after so much divination. See you soon. Oh, that was really cool. I'm so curious to see how these decisions work out, but I think it's time for us to make another card. We got quite a few points for all that. Alright, let's create a new card. I really would like an air card. I guess once we start using up the background... Magical post office seems pretty cool. I think I'm gonna go with this one though. Jade Monk's Waterfalls. All right, and hmm. seed of knowledge. I mean, there's a few that go really well with a jade. I'm gonna go with the shaman though. This will be a hopefully a strong air card. It'd be nice to have some earth in it as well. Well, let's just go all in on the air. I think this will be a good combination. It should be pretty powerful like that. Or Jade Road Keepers. think yeah let's do this one okay oh this is beautiful there's so many cool parts of this card where do I even start with this Thank you. 
Okay. I like that quite a bit. Zen. That's a pretty cool card. <laughs> Very neat. Very neat. Alright. Oh, we have more letters. Okay. All right. So this is Greth. This was the friend of Dala Dalia. <clears throat> and this person has merged with one of the Bahamuths. Welcome, Greth. Hi, Fortuna. Thanks for having me. Dahlia filled me in briefly on your situation. Not that it isn't obvious just by looking at me, huh? Ah, uh, yeah, it looks bad. Let me say it out loud anyway for the sake of therapy. I've got a Bahamut fused with me. How does it feel? Whoa, never thought I'd get that question. A few who know assume it's just fucked up, I guess. But if we're talking feelings here, it doesn't feel bad at all, actually. I mean, aesthetically, it's terrible. But it doesn't hurt, and I can sort of communicate with Bahamut at an abstract level. If anything, I feel more powerful. Wow. Glad to hear you're not suffering in any case. But it isn't worth it. Firstly, because summoning a Bahamut could well get me executed. But more importantly, I want my cute cheekbone back. <laughs> Looks like an important loss, yes. So do you think you can help me? If there's a way to cure you, my deck will find it. But I need to know more about you first. Mind if I ask you some questions? Of course. <clears throat> uh, tell me more about being a witch architect. It's a made-up title, to be honest. I've never encountered another witch who defined herself as an architect, at least. A pioneer, then. I just like to build things. I was also an architect when I was mortal. But being able to design and execute projects by yourself is way better than overseeing years of development. And all the bureaucracy. Ugh. I'm sure that I ascended out of pure stress. <laughs> Plus, using magic to avoid having to deal with the laws of physics sure is a perk. Sounds like a pain, building things on Earth. You bet. I was one of those people who preferred playing Minecraft in creative mode. Minecraft? Ah, that may have come after your time. You come from Earth too, right? When did you ascend? 1968! Really? I thought when we had that flashback in the last episode, I thought we were like in the 80s or something. Whoa! I was born in the year 2000 and ascended in 2032. Were you a hippie? Not really, but I met a lot of them. I owned a food truck and I visited a lot of events. I had a side business reading tarot too. That sounds really cool. Glad to know you're not one of those medieval witches. I can't stand them. Yeah, they're so uptight. Now another question. Why summon a Bahamut? Wait, wait, wait. What did you say we make this conversation instead of interrogation? It's not interrogation. It's an interview. And besides, I'm not that interesting. Come on, Fortuna. All witches are interesting. And you're the only fortune teller in our coven. Dahlia speaks highly of you, too. I'm dying to know more. You have this special aura that makes you feel makes me feel challenged. You're so intimidating. The adrenaline is making me feel alive just being in your presence. <laughs> Thanks. What do you want to know anyway? Hmm. What is it that drives you? Freedom. Hmm. But that's circumstantial. I mean, ultimately, what makes your life worth living? What is it that drives you? I think curiosity is one of the the main reasons any person should want to be alive. Curiosity. Curiosity? I'd say that's my 
Raison d'entre too. Interesting. I feel like you're using me for your cosmic, your cosmic studies. <laughs> well, I can't miss the chance to pick apart such a wonderful being. It's all right. Bring it on. It's all right. Bring it on. Ah, thank you so much for indulging me. I'm truly enjoying this, though. Glad you're having a good time. <laughs> My turn now. Sure. So, why summon a bomb? Uh, this isn't an easy topic for me to discuss. Not because of the Bahamut. That part is pretty straightforward. I wanted to build a temple out of the skull of a titan of the quarry. The harder the material, the more powerful the altar. And those skulls, they resist carving in a supernatural way. I tried every method I know, and when I ran out of options, I resorted to forbidden magic. Why are you so desperate to build that shrine? That's the sensitive issue. I'm looking for meaning. Meaning... I know it's an unanswerable question, or a question that hasn't been answered yet, if I want to put this optimistically. The meaning of life. Ah, I feel silly just saying it out loud. Why? Everyone thinks about it now and then. Really, life is supposed to have a meaning? Uh, no, I think everybody does think about it every now and then. Yeah, but I'm like, obsessed with it. I can't ignore the question. You're a fortune teller. You should be aware that there is something more out there. The book where everything is written. Is there someone writing us? Is this just a simulation? Does the universe actually exist, or is it nothing but a figment of my imagination? Do you stop existing when I'm not looking at you? Are we all protagonists? Do we have a purpose? Okay, okay, I get you. Am I missing out on some cosmic truth? Was there something before this universe? Why isn't everybody else obsessed with these same questions? Well, we actually learned from the Bahamut that there was... Well, there not that there was something, there was nothing that they were all in, right? Greth. Oh, I'm sorry, I keep spiraling out of control. I can't stand being by myself because I keep returning to these ideas again and again. I've built countless thought shrines looking for answers. And as I dig deeper, I only find more and more questions. I haven't slept in the last century. That's why I summoned the Bahamut. Carpe diem is not an option for me. I'm stuck in cogito ergo sum. I'm a witch, for fuck's sake. If not us, who is supposed to unravel the mysteries of the cosmos? Why did I ascend? Why couldn't I stay an oblivious Boston architect? You know, the cards aren't only made for predicting things. They are also an excellent tool for meditation. I'd be happy to help you on your quest. Really? Of course. The two of us managed to get out of our predicaments. I'll certainly join you in one of your Skull Temple meditations. Who knows what we might find channeling the power of your shrines through my deck. That makes my heart race. Yes, please, let's dissect the cosmos together. What's your predi predicament, though? Ah. I'm exiled, forced to remain on this asteroid. Let's leave it at that for now. Hmm, okay. I promise I'll help you be free in any way I can. Partners. 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 How exciting. Everyone always dismisses my project as futile. Thank you so much, Fortuna. So Fortuna, tell me, what are your thoughts on relationships? Uh-oh. Are you asking if I'm single? No, silly. But are you? Yes. Cool. What I mean is, what are your thoughts on romantic relationships? Some people can't live without them. Some others don't want them at all. I'm curious where you stand on that. What are your thoughts on relationships? Oh. Um... It's strange that this question is poised to me, the player, and I get to make these choices. But if I'm playing Fortuna, well, I definitely think life can be complete without one. I personally find them desirable and enjoyable. Uh, but I also think that they're kind of cool and overrated a little. I'm going to say desirable and enjoyable. Although it's rare that someone catches my eye. 
Okay, your turn again. What do you like to do in your free time? I spend most of my time on my project, but on the rare occasion when I'm burned out, like I like to read. So all the witches like to read, go figure. I read essays and arcane texts, mostly philosophy, so I guess don't ever really rest. While I do enjoy taking extremely long baths. Oh, this person's like after my own heart here. Even then, I can't stop thinking. I'm cursed by my never-ending quest for illumination. Have you ever met Jasmine? I haven't, although Dahlia speaks about her often. Why? She may have something to help you get your mind off things. Jasmine's speciality is tea craft. She's helped me through many difficult times. Cool. Witch drugs. Ah, more or less. But without the drawbacks of the substances produced by mortals. I'll try anything. Hook me up. I'll let her know. Do you value personal or over collective well-being? Whoa, what a thing to spurt out of the blue. What's more important, yourself or the community? Yourself or the universe? And I won't accept any compromise on this one. Ultimately, should you, should you have to choose, what should the priority be, the individual or the group? Oh, this is a pretty philosophical question here. Um... That's a hard question, internet. That is a hard question. Because on the one hand, I think I think the well-being of everyone is more important. But you can't control everyone. And trying to control everyone, you know, tends to lead to bad consequence. You can only control yourself. So, and, and by focusing on the individual... As long as one of the individual's priority is to help others, that is the only way to really go about it. So I'm going to say oneself. Oneself. Even if that has negative impact on the universe? Yes, fuck the system. Yes, what's the point in existing if not to be happy? Yes, what's the point in existing if not to be happy? I get your point. I've put a lot of thought into this too. Reality is a construct after all. Why be miserable if everything is going to vanish as soon as we're unplugged from the cosmos? Happiness can come from making others happy. Yeah, good. Thank you, Fortuna. You need to be lucky enough that it does for you though. True. I guess there's not a definitive right answer for this one. More questions? What are your thoughts on Dana? I don't know why I would ask this person this question. I don't even like that it's an option, but we'll ask it. What are your thoughts on a day now? Oh, time to talk about the boss. I guess neither of us have a lot of sympathy for her, right? I'm not super happy with having been sentenced to a thousand years of isolation. No. And you? I summoned a behemoth. I think that speaks for itself when it comes to my respect for authority. I didn't mind her before, though. She's always let me focus on my project. But now that I know she'll have me executed if she discovers what I did, I have to get rid of either the Palmeth or Adana. Uh-oh. Whoa, heavy words. What? I'm not keen on being erased, at least not before I've finished my quest for knowledge. I understand. And you're not the only one who's fed up with our leader's policies. Adana is full of herself if she thinks she can handle this many discontented wishes. Look... I understand we need some rules to ensure the stability of the coven, but I can't possibly agree with these arbitrary punishments. Under no circumstances should a witch should ever be sentenced to death or exile. If someone made some bad decisions, they need guidance and forgiveness. We're supposed to be family, not the army. I don't know, we are kind of messing around with like cosmic entities at this point, right? Like, there's probably a good reason this is forbidden, like the fact that your face is fused in half with a cosmic deity. I feel like you're ready to get your fortune read. Alright, shall we? I imagine that the main topic here is how to deal with that behemoth of yours. Yes, please. 
Also, I'd like to ask about my personal quest while we're at it. I doubt a single card will allow me to finally untangle the meaning of life and the cosmos, but maybe not. But I'm sure it'll be able to point you in the right direction. Yes, the quest for knowledge is about asking questions from as many angles as possible. And your deck is one I haven't tried yet. Oh, wow. Back in the first episode when uh, when we went for water, remember the the thing that we chose as our purpose like uh, the thing that you know drove us was knowledge so i wonder if we had chosen something else if the, if it wouldn't be this character you know okay the standing ovation opera house make all means resonant through every context a strong avatar for justice and beauty with purpose the aether wings elevates the arcane for everyone to see Leadership, purpose, justice, predestination, luck. So I think I'm going to put this one for the quest. You need to break even more rules to find the secrets of the cosmos. Disregard all authority. Seek the forbidden. Ooh. You will never untangle the meaning of life, but your work will allow others to reach it. Oh, that's a... I don't want to say that to them. You've done enough introspection. Now you need experience. The meaning of life is hidden beneath the greatest love and greatest loss. Hmm. I like this answer. This is definitely my favorite answer. Uh, you need to break even more rules. But I think it sends them on kind of a dark path. Uh, I don't like this answer because it means that they'll never succeed. So I think we go with this one. Damn, that seems so obvious. The meaning of life is to live, isn't it? No, no, you're absolutely right. I spent so much time inside of my head, it's no wonder I'm so lost at this point. You can't appreciate a painting with your eyes closed. Time for me to do some living, huh? Sounds about right. Will you help me with that? Haha, <laughs> it'll be my pleasure. Once I manage to get rid of this behemoth, I'll visit you just for fun, okay? Yes, please. It's a deal. Nice. Alright, what do we get for the behemoth? Ooh, High Alchemy! Again, this is like my favorite card so far. I don't think it's a powerful card. I love the meanings for it. Um, I think this is going to give us a... I don't know if the actual cards mean anything other than the points you get. Like, I don't know if all the answers. But it would be nice to think that it really does matter what card comes up. Okay. Learn as much as you can now, because you will miss the Bahamuth once you're free from them. I like that answer. Do not fight them. Embrace the Bahamut. The way to stop being split is to become one. Ooh, I like that answer too. Conquer them. The Bahamut is feeding on your fear. Stop being afraid. It's your turn to intimidate them. I like this answer quite a bit. Uh... But I like this answer too. This is also a very good answer. I, I think I have to go with this one though. Running inwards instead of trying to escape my fate, huh? It is a smart way of keeping it hidden. Instead of cutting them loose, allowing the Bahamut all the way in. It's a scary idea though. What if I stop being me? I don't know. Well, what is me, anyway? Existence is a river and we are never the same self at any point, at any time. Um, they said that they're a philosopher and that's actually a philosophical argument. You know, it's like, you know, you can't tread to the same river twice. Um, of course. Whatever gets me closer to my objective. Glad you're taking this optimistically. <laughs> we can't control fate, right? 
If life gives you Bahamuts, <laughs> indeed. Do you want to look into anything else? No, thank you. Giving me some ideas about how to get rid of this Bahamut. I'll do some research on my side too. Cool, let's meet again soon to teach this bastard a lesson. Looking forward to it. See you soon. Oh, they were cool. Oh. Looks like Bahamuts are in. Yeah, they're all the rage amongst rebel witches with poor judgment. Ha 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 ha. I think I can help if you're interested. Hmm. I guess you would know. I'm all ears. I don't know if we should... Yeah, we should... I don't know. I'm all ears. We, the Bahamut, know each other's names. If you knew the name of the Bahamut possessing Greth, any ritual you might perform to free her would be more likely to succeed. That's perfect. Tell me their name. Ah, I know we're partners in crime, but I'm not about to give up one of my siblings. Not for free, at least. Oh, what do you want? Am I not paying enough to you already? The deck stuff is one thing. This is another matter. All right, what do you want? Don't fret. I just want a bit of that delicious power you're harvesting. Five units of fire to betray a fellow Bahamut, plus two of air to release their name to you witches. Hmm. You don't need to answer right now. Save up. Decide if you're interested or not. And when the time comes to try and free Greth, you just let that energy flow to me, and I'll whisper the Bahamut's name to your ear. I see. It's not too high of a cost, right? So now he's asking for energy. Hmm. How much do we trust him? I can't help but notice he's the only male character. Hmm. Abram. Still afraid of me after all this time. Just cautious. I'm sure you're a forbidden entity for a reason. Suit yourself. But I'll say it again, I am on your side. Trust needs time. I understand. Well, let you let me know if you want to take me up on my offer when the time comes. Have fun. Okay, so we can actually, we can make another card. We could also go read more books if we wanted. I wish there was a quick way to check how many points you've got. I want to get a few more points before we before we make another card. Dear Fortuna, thank you so much for helping my friend Luis. I hope she didn't bother you. I would have never imagined she'd do something as bold as contact you directly. Love to know how it went between you two. Can I come over? Yeah, of course, Jasmine. You can come over. Oh, Jasmine's so cute. Hello, Fortuna. How are you doing? Fine, I guess. Happy to see you. Oh, it feels so good to be able to meet again like this. I only wish I could get to see your garden again. It must be beautiful after all this time. I'm pretty proud of it. In due time, I'll be happy to show you everything. Until then, I brought you this. It's a blue iris. This is beautiful. Thank you. This flower is a bringer of hope, a charm for faith, wisdom, and understanding. I thought it'd improve the energy of the room and help you with your fortune telling. I love it. Thank you so much. So Luis came to visit you. That's right. I'm so sorry. I should have consulted with you before telling anyone. I just wanted to share the joy of having my friend back. I didn't expect her to come and see you out of the blue. It's all right. Don't worry about it. She seems like a nice girl. She's a very gentle soul. Hope you're able to help her. She's in a pretty delicate situation, to be honest. Oh, is she in trouble? What's going on with Luis? Oh, I don't know. Do we tell Jasmine about this? She likes to gossip. We, I remember, she likes to gossip. 
And she's also friends with Adana, so... I think I should say I shouldn't disclose any consula consultation. Oh, I'm sorry. You should ask her for yourself. If she's alright with sharing, I'll be happy to tell you more about it. You are absolutely right. I'll pay her a visit and see what is going on. She seems a bit stressed lately. She could use the help, yes. In fact, I'm gonna head to her place now. Do you need anything? It's alright. Go. Bye bye. Uh, actually, wait a minute. Hmm, what is it? Oh yeah, the herbs for Greth. I need some herbs to help a witch friend. Oh, you've met Greth the architect? Dahlia's friend? She's never got time for me. Now I'm jealous. She seems like a very busy witch. And what does the fabulous Greth need from me? That she doesn't even have time to ask for me in person. Oh my, you're actually jealous. She's not the one asking anyway. I'm asking you as my friend to help me help her. Uh, okay, okay. Anything for you. What are these herbs for? Something to ease her mind. Have her relaxed. I see. Well, that's a pretty common ailment, a distressed mind. I have something on me that might help. Oh? Bocapa monere mixed with chamomile. Infuse it with a bit of lemon or honey and have Greth drink it while she thinks about a toy she loved back when she was a mortal kid. I've never seen it fail. Thank you so much, Jasmine. This is exactly what I needed. You're welcome. And may Greth will deign to thank me in person next time. <laughs> Do you have some herbs against jealousy? It's for a friend of mine. Shut up. <laughs> okay, I must go now. Thanks again. Goodbye. Cool. Alright. Oh, I wish you could interact with the plants. That would have been cool. Looks like Dahlia wants to talk to us again. Uh... Let's... Let's go do some of this. And maybe if we get some more points, we might make one more card. Okay. Tail at random from a collection. Last one standing by Giada Zara Zara Rise. When your people started dying, they did it without a whimper, vanishing like fruits plucked by invisible hands. As the lead hunter, you led a squad of your best men into the jungle. You returned alone, an entire squadron of warriors gone while your back was turned. Must be a giant snake, swallowing them whole, said the village chief.
still recording.